Welcome back to News On. I want to welcome back our panel joining us once again, the CEO of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo, also with us, Minnesota gubernatorial candidate Mike Murphy. Thank you both for sticking yeah. around. So uh, right before the break, I was talking yeah. about Republican lawmakers kind of taking matters into their own hands, writing this letter to GoFundMe. Uh, this after that crowdfunding platform took down and kind of froze those donations, if you will, that were going to the Freedom Convoy, citing that they were violent. Um, and then they received some threats of lawsuits, and they decided to unfreeze those. Uh, but will this letter make any difference, in your opinion, Melissa? I don't know if it's going to make a difference, because they're going to do what they're going to do. And I think that there was some scuttlebutt last week when they said that they were not going to automatically refund the money after they froze it. They were going to require people to request it. And if they didn't, they were going to give it yes. to you. Other mm -hmm. things of their choice. I think that is one of the reasons that they came back then and said, no, no, we'll refund the money. But again, I have very little faith in, in the Republican caucus to do anything because they just seem to be so weak. When anything happens, and really never stand up to. And if people look at what Trump used to say about social media and then what happened going into the 2020 election and then fast forward, here we are a year and a half from now. So do I think anything's going to come of it? Do I think they're going to do anything with it? Absolutely not. Well, there was a threat, and it was by, you know, the governor of Florida, also the governor of Texas, saying that's fraud, that you can't do that, make people have to fill out paperwork uh, in order to get a refund uh, they were going to freeze those and then allow supposedly the, the people organizing Freedom Convoy to pick another charity. And that's what was going to happen. And then they decided to get involved, these attorneys, and threaten uh, legal action. And that's when they switched everything. But uh, what do you think is going to happen, Mike? Anything? Uh, from the Republican side, no. Um, this this entire party has been weak. We've, we've lost our way as conservatives and we're caving into the woke mob that's out there and we're letting the media control our lives with their narratives that the Democrats are pushing. We have to have strong leaders elected into these positions that are willing to do the bold things that are needed. And I'm really happy that Governor DeSantis and Governor Abbott uh, took a step and, and had their attorney generals draft these letters to investigate these organizations like GoFundMe. Because let's talk about all the money that BLM and Antifa raised through these organizations that just magically disappeared without any trace. Where is that at? Where are those investigations? But instead, we're going after freedom-loving Canadians and freedom-loving Americans uh, who are standing up to these mandates and the tyranny that the government is creating. Uh, Joe Biden is clueless. His administration's lost. Uh, we have no direction from them at all where they're going. And uh, I feel like the country is running in a million different directions with no real leadership whatsoever. Let me and say one, one thing. Go about, for it, about Melissa. Yeah, the difference between BLM and the difference between the Freedom Convoy is so far to date, the Freedom Convoy has not committed any acts of violence. BLM organizations and Antifa committed acts of violence in the city of New York. I saw it myself. And I saw other cities uh, where they committed acts of violence on TV, but I saw it live myself in New York City. So that is a fact. It, it is, and it all, all right. stemmed here in Minneapolis under the failures of Governor Tim Walz. He let them burn our cities down, 1,500 buildings and a and, and billion dollars worth of damage and 700 police officers injured. But yet he kowtows to him, and when the Reverend Al Sharpton shows up into town, he uh, rolls out the red carpet for him. Uh, Minnesotans are sick and tired of it, and so are Americans across the country. They're tired of the uh, nonsense of the left. And one more update to that. Also, an Ontario court has uh, freezed access to Give Send Go. That's the other crowdfunding platform uh, where all the donations kind of switched, although they're fighting that, saying, look, we're an American company and you have no right to do that. So we're going to continue to follow that story. But I do want to switch gears now and talk about Ukraine because that is continuing to make headlines. So U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken warning Americans in Ukraine to get out and to get out now uh, while meeting with his counterparts from India, Japan, Australia. Uh, just this morning, America's top diplomat laid out just essentially a timeline for potential Russian invasion on the Western uh, neighbor. And they say a picture, you know, is worth a thousand words. We've all heard that expression. Well, there is new satellite images. You can see them right there on your screen showing that Russian President Vladimir Putin doesn't appear to be merely just bluffing here. Um, you can actually see those forces moving towards Ukraine. 
this image in particular shows several significant new military deployments across the region, including the arrival of more than 550 troop tents and equipment and hundreds of vehicles in Crimea. And if that were to happen, uh, a lot of Americans are on edge on whether U.S. troops will actually go into Ukraine. That has been the focus of our question. Here is what the president told Lester Holt. What are your plans toward American citizens who are in Ukraine and might be there during an invasion? What scenarios would you put American troops to rescue and get Americans out? They're not. That's a world war. When Americans and Russians start shooting at one another, we're in a very different world than we've ever been in. Not even on behalf of simply evacuating Americans? No. How, how, how do you do that? How do you even find them? So you may recall, that's a very different message than what the president said when it came to the situation in Afghanistan. Take a listen. How about our Afghan allies? We have about 80,000 people. Well, who, that's not the Is estimate. that too high? That's too high. How the many? estimate we're giving is somewhere between 50 and 65,000 folks. So you may recall back then he said, you know, I, I don't care about the deadline. We're going to continue to go in there and go after uh, you know, our allies and Americans that are stranded there. He's not saying that here. Again, the situation is different. We were trying to leave a war. Now he's trying to avoid a war, at least according to his words, and he believes that sending U.S. troops there would basically be provocation. How concerned are you, Mike, that we could be headed towards another world war? And what do you think about the president's decision to say right there in front of all to see that he will not send American forces in there, even if it means risking the lives of other Americans. Look, I don't think we're going to war with Russia. Uh, I mean, Biden gave Russia his pipeline. He gave Vladimir Putin his pipeline the first week he was in office. We're not going to go to war with Russia. This is all posturing. Um, you know, the economy here is failing in the United States, so we have to have something that distracts the current situation that's going on with inflation, supply chains, COVID, everything you name it. Uh, that uh, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, they're not equipped to handle a war with, with, with Russia whatsoever. Our, our military is uh, feeling the strain. There is no trust in Joe Biden's administration. It would be a, a botched attempt to even defend Ukraine. Uh, we know that he's not going to go save Americans whatsoever. They have 100,000 Russian troops on the border, and yesterday they were performing military exercises with 30,000 troops. There is no way that we're going to be able to compete with this uh, situation that's going on with Russia whatsoever and do it effectively and safely without an all-out world war. But it doesn't surprise me that Joe Biden is not going to go rescue Americans when he left thousands of Americans still stranded in Afghanistan today. Melissa, your thoughts? Well, I disagree with Mike that there's no chance that we go to war with Russia. I think it's a huge possibility. And, uh, you know, obviously China would side with Russia in any type of world war and that would be really bad. I think it would be bad for the entire world. As far as a ground war, we wouldn't win a ground war in Russia during the middle of winter over there. Um, and again, they'd get China's help. So all of this is really, really scary times for them to even, even be discussing this in any way or even hinting that this is a possibility, I think is problematic. After what happened in Afghanistan when they didn't get all the Americans out of there, if someone was an American and they're in Ukraine, I'd get out of there because they're not going to come get you and they're not going to come save you. So I, I think it's a problem. I think the market has already had different sell-off reactions to that when we've heard news on Russia over the course of the last few weeks. And I think the, that the market is also taking into account the fact that we could have a problem and, and an escalation over there. And that's why we're nowhere near the highs. It's not just the inflation numbers as well. I think that it would be a terrible thing to be in any type of war with Biden at the helm. And I, I don't know what's going to happen. I really, really don't. I don't know why they're trying. They're not trying to de-escalate it. They're almost trying to escalate it because they're egging Putin on. I'm curious to know what you, our viewers at home, think about that. That is the focus of our question today. You heard what our panel had to say about that. And just want to mention again, uh, the White House now assigning the vice president to lead the charge, if you will, uh, to handle the situation in Ukraine. Uh, that is do you mind if I make one more quick comment? Real quick, because we've got five uh, seconds. The only reason why I could see us going to war is getting the war machine going for the, econo uh, the economy boosting aspect of it, and that's it. But there's no way America could, could ever get through it. All righty. Thank you so much. We'll have to leave it there. It's a burning question. Everyone wants to know who's keeping track of illegal immigrants. We'll be right back.